Hey, Chavel, what's going on? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Nun Aleph, Daf 51 of Mesechta Yoma. Daf 51, uh, we kind of wrap up our discussion from yesterday with um, the discussion of Ashtikol Tmura and uh, and the power of the Kohen Gadol, and if it was a partial Yochid, partial Tzibor, maybe a partial Shutfin. So we wrap that up and we get to a new Mishnah. Um, which then continues on the discussion of the Kohen Gadol and doing his avod on Yom Kippur, which is super, super interesting. So, Chavah, let us um, begin on Dafnun Aleph, Amur Aleph, um, four lines into the page. Ulurav Sheisha, Sadamukum Lebi Eilu Shalaharin, Luke Mabe Pesach, the Dochas Ashabas Vesatumu Vosetumur, the Kobin Yachru. That is the Kasha. Got it? Good, let's go weiter. Just kidding. So, we, yesterday we had quoted this price, right? Which said that there's a chumrah when it comes to a zevach, um, right? That there's, that in a certain, there's in some ways, a sacrifice is more stringent than the tamura, than the animal that you try to, so that you swap in for that sacrifice, which ends up getting the same kedusha, right? Because kedusha just like the initial sacrifice. So sometimes the initial sacrifice is more stringent. In some ways, the initial sacrifice is more stringent than the tamura. But in other ways, the tamura is more stringent than the initial sacrifice. And we said, what's this zevach? What's this initial sacrifice that we are um, discussing, that we're talking about? So we wanted to suggest that it's talking about the cow of Aharon and Yom Kippur, the part of the Kohen God on Yom Kippur. Rav Shesha suggested, no, it's Taka talking about not his cow, but his ram that he brings as a Korban Ola. So now the Gemara asks the Kasha, says Ulurav Sheshes. I don't know if I just said Rav Chizda, but I meant Rav Sheshes. Ulurav Sheshes at the Mukibla Be'elish Al-Haren, Lukma Be'Pesach. Rav Sheshes, why say that this Brisa, which says that um, a Zevach, a Korban, is more stringent than a Tmura because a Korban could be Doche Shabbos, can be Doche Tuma can be um 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 it can, can make a tmura. So how come that that how come that zevach with Sheshis? How come you're saying that it's specifically talking about the ram of Aharon on Yom Kippur? I'll suggest that maybe it's talking about the Korban Pesach. The Doch is a Shabbos, Korban Pesach, of course, as we know from Mesech the Psachim, it's Doch Shabbos, you can bring the Korban Pesach on Shabbos. Vesa Tuma, if the majority of Amisel is Thomas, you bring the Korban. Uh, Pesach nonetheless. Bo Setmura. And if you make a, if you swap out the Korban Pesach for a different one, so then it becomes a Tmura. The, 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 the additional one becomes a Tmura. The Korban Yachinu. Because it is a, uh, Korban of an individual. And so it makes a Tmura. So, that's the Kashan of Sheshis. How come say it's, how, how come if Sheshis says it's talking about the Ram of Aharon, why not say that it's talking about the Korban Pesach? That that's the Zevach. So the Gemara answer is, Kesavar ain't shochten is a Pesach ala yochen. Because Rav Sheshes holds that you don't actually slaughter a Korban Pesach for one individual. It has to be a group. And therefore, it's not a Korban Yochid, therefore wouldn't make a Tmur. Venukma Pesach Sheni. So why don't we say that it's Pesach Sheni? Pesach Sheni, you could... Right, if you have one fellow who's Tame, so he brings a Pesach Sheni. So that would be a Korban Yachid. So why don't we say it's talking about Pesach Sheni? So Midachi Tumo. To which the Gemara says, yeah, but is Pesach Sheni Doche Tumo? Right, it's Machlokas, whether or not Pesach Sheni is Doche Tumo. So Rav Sheshis would say that uh, Pesach Sheni is not Doche Tumo. And therefore... Um, Rav Sheshis would say that the Korban that is Docha Shabbos, Docha Tumah, and makes a Tmura is the Ram of Aharon. Fracti Gemara, Amr Rav Huna Breda Rav Yeshua Le Rava. Rav Huna Breda Rav Yeshua asks, Rava, Vatana Maishna Pesach de Korile Korban Yochid, Umaishna Chagiga de Korile Korban Siba. Right? We had said earlier, right, we had this, um, these two Brises, one in which Rav Meir responds to Tanakama uh, regarding Korban Yochids, one in which Reb Yaakov responds to the Tanakama talking about Korban Tzibors and we refer to a Korban Pesach as a Korban Yochid and as a Chagi and to a Chagiga as a Korban Tzibor. So the Gemara asks, Mashna Pesach the Korile 
Korban Yachid, how come the Korban Pesach is referred to as an individual Korban? Umashna Chagiga de Kari Korban Sibor. And whereas the Korban Chagiga, the, um, the Shaman Chagiga, the, 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 the Shlomim that you bring on the Shalosh Rugalim. So, so, how come that's called a communal offering? If it's because you offer the Korban Chagiga on the Shalosh Rugalim, Korban Pesach, you also offer on the Shalosh Rugalim. So the Gemayan says, Ika Pesach Sheni Dilasi Bichnufia. Well, Pesach Sheni, however, is not brought on the Shalosh Rugalim. And because the Pesach Sheni is not brought on the Shalosh Rugalim, so therefore we don't refer to the Korban Pesach as a Korban Tzibor. Okay. Armelet, to which Rufunabe of Yeshua says, Imkain, if that's the case, Yehei Docha Esa Shabbos, Vesa Tuma. Rav Meir had said that a Korban Pesach is Docha Shabbos and is Docha Tuma. So now if we're saying that the, right, we're saying, right, the Rav Meir had said that a Korban Pesach is a Korban Yachid, uh, is a Korban Yachid, right, an individual Korban, and it's Docha Shabbos and it's Docha Tuma. And if we're saying that the Pesach Sheni is a Korban Yachid, it's, it's considered the Korban Pesach, it's considered like the Korban Pesach and it's a Korban Yachid, so that should also be Docha Shabbos and Docha Tuma. But we want to assume that the Pesach Sheni is not Docha Tuma. So Amr Leis, which Rav responds in, yes, command Amr Dachi. So it's like the Manda Amr Utaka says that the Pesach Sheni would be Doche. Tuma the Tanis, we learn in the Brisa, Pesach Sheni, Doche Sa Shabbos, Ve'enu Doche Sa Tuma, Rav Yudomer Av Doche Sa Tuma. That we learn in the Brisa, that the Pesach Sheni is Doche Shabbos, but not Doche Tuma, according to the Tanakama. Rav Yudah says, no, in addition to being Doche Shabbos, the Pesach Sheni is also Doche Tuma. My Tana the Tama, my Tama the Tanakama, how come? The Tanakhama says that the Pesach Sheni is not Doche Tuma. Omelach, so Tanakhama will say to you, well, Pnei Tuma Dachisu, Vihaisa Betuma. No. What's the reason why he's not bringing the Pesach Rishon? Because he's Tameh. So if comes, if we give him a second chance to bring us, you know, Pesach Sheni, well, make sure you're Tower by that point. If you're not Tower, well, guess what? Just like you missed the Pesach Rishon, you're going to miss the Pesach Sheni too. Rabbi Yudah Amalach, when Rabbi Yudah said, will respond, Amr Kra, the Pasuk says, Kichol Chukas HaPesach Yaisu also, that they do the Pesach Sheni, like all of the statutes of the Pesach Rishon, Vafilu Betuma, and even if, right, you do it just like the Pesach Rishon, and that means that even if you're Tameh, still do it like you would do the Pesach Rishon. HaTorach Zira, all of LaSosu Betayra Lozach Yasenu Betuma. Look, we want you to do it Betayra. But if you can't do it Betayra, Kiluf, the Pesach Rishon you were Tameh, so you didn't bring the Pesach Rishon. Now comes the Pesach Sheni. Look, we would like for you to be Tar. If you're not Tar, so what, what can we do? Bring it be Tumah. Fine. Now, says the Gemara, V'tepukli da'asher lo amr achmona, mishalohu maybe. Going back to our initial question, right? Which is, is the par of the Kohen Gadol considered a uh, Korban Yachid or Korban Tzibor? So we say, well, why don't we answer that question by the fact, by the fact that it says, Asher lo, that he takes the parachatas, Asher lo, that's his. Mishelohu, maybe. That he brings his own cow, in which case it's a, it's, it's a, it's a korban yochid, and it should make a tamura. The Tanya is related by the Asher lo, that the, that the, um, that the cow is his. Mishelohu, maybe, below Mishel Tzibur. He brings his own cow. He doesn't bring a communal cow. Is it possible that maybe I'll say, look, he brings his own cow. He doesn't bring a communal, a, a, a cow that belongs to the community because this cow doesn't bring atonement for the community. It's for him and the other Kohanim. But maybe I'll suggest that he would be able to bring a cow from uh, that belongs to the other Kohanim. Because, after all, they are getting atonement through this cow. Therefore, it says, no, it has to belong to him, not even to the other Kohanim. Okay, now let me ask. Fine, so he shouldn't bring a cow from that belongs to the other Kohanim. Fine. But what if he did? What if he did, Lamaise? Maybe it could work. Guess what? The Pazik says, a third time. Asher lo. It has to be his. It can't be the communities. It can't be the Kohanims. It must be his. Shana Kosov Alev La'akev. The Pasuk repeated it a third time in order to say 
that it must belong to the coin alone, to the coin gadol alone. So, therefore, we want to ask the kasha that why don't we have our answer right here that the cow belongs to the coin gadol? It's a korban shoyachin. So the Gemara says, the time, according to that logic, but if the Kwanim aren't getting some kind of ownership in this cow, well then how are they going to get atonement? That even though the cow comes from the Kohen Gadol, nonetheless, the, 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 the Torah makes it like it's Hefker with regard to the other Kwanim, that they also Mimele get a portion in the Kohen Gadol's cow. Hocha gabi tmura, and therefore I could argue also that by tmura nami as well, shiny because of the higher and the afkir achmona gabi echav akoanim, that just like by the kapara, even though the cow comes from a higher, and nonetheless, the other koanim get an atonement through it. So also when it comes to tmura, even though the I can argue that even though the cow technically belongs to Aharon, nonetheless we can consider it as though the other Kohanim have a portion in it and it would not make a Tamura. That is, uh, okay, so that's why you can't necessarily bring a proof from the fact that it says Asher Lo, that it belongs to him, that it must be a Korban Yachid. No, maybe Legabe Tamura, we could view it as though the other Kohanim nonetheless have a portion in it and therefore um, it would not make a Tamura. Exciting stuff. Chedre. We get to a new Mishnah. Super interesting, right? Let's read that again. So the Kohen Gadol would now walk in the Heichol. He would enter in the uh, Ulam and he would be in the Heichol. And he would walk through the Heichel. We'll talk about how exactly he walked through the Heichel. Till he got to the two curtains. Meaning, dividing the Heichel and the Kodesh HaKodashim were these two curtains. And in between the two curtains was an Amma of distance. Now we're going to see that this was specifically in the second Beis HaMikdash. But in the first Beis HaMikdash, there weren't two curtains. Instead, there was a one Amma thick wall. Now the thing is that in the second Beis Hamikdash, the um, ceiling, the, the 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 ceiling was very high. It was forty amos, and a one amma wall. Apparently, I'm not an, uh, an engineer, but apparently, a one amma wall is not thick enough to stand forty feet tall, uh, forty amos tall, and therefore it's like sixty feet. Um, so therefore, in the second base of Mikdash, because, and, they, and you can't make the wall thicker because there are specific, you know, dimensions for walls. Like it has to be, right? Like for example, the Heichal, we're going to see actually all these, these things on the tomorrow's stuff, that the Heichal was 40 Amas, the Kodesh Kodashim was 60 Amas, the wall in between was one Amas, that we have specific dimensions. And therefore, they couldn't make the wall in the second base of Mikdash thicker in order to uh, allow it to go taller. So therefore, instead, they solved this by just having two curtains there with an ama space in the middle. Um, and that's what they did. So, says the Mishnah, So he walked through the Eichel until he got to the two curtains that divided between the Kodesh and the Kodesh HaKodashim. And in between each of the two curtains was one ama. Am Reb Yossi, was Reb Yossi argues, I'm sorry, Rabbi Yossi Omer, Lo Aisa Shamela Prochas Achas. Rabbi Yossi says, wait, no, there was only one curtain. Bilvad. Shinemar Vivdila Prochas Lochem Ben Akodesh Ben Akodesh Kodashim. That the parochas divided between the Kodesh and the Kodesh Kodashim, i.e., there was only one parochas dividing. So Tanakhama says that, that there were two curtains dividing between the Kodesh and the Kodesh Kodashim. And, whoa, and the Kodesh Kodashim. Rabbi Yossi says that there was one curtain. Frek the Gemara Shapir Kamalu Rabbi Yossi Lerabon. The Gemara says, wait a second, Rabbi Yossi has a good kasha. The Pasuk says, The Pasuk says that there was one curtain. Why does the Tanakhama say that there were two? Rabbanon Amrilach, the rabbis will say to you, will respond to you, Hanimile b'mishkan. That was in the Mishkan. In the Mishkan there was a curtain. Ava b'mikdash But in the second temple, came to Lavoy Amatraxin, 
since there wasn't this one ama thick wall in the second temple because the ceiling was too high. Uva mikdash rishon avoy, huda avoy, and it was in the first temple that there was this thick wall. But in the second temple, because of the height of the ceiling, it could not support one wall. And the rabbis were not sure if there would be only one curtain, would it be considered... No, that's not true. The rabbis weren't sure, was the Amatroxin, was this one Amma wall considered part of the Kodesh HaKodashim or part of the Heichal? And obviously the, nach, the Nafkamina is, if you're going to make only one curtain, where do you put it? Do you put it at the beginning of where this wall, where the wall started? Or do you put it where the wall ends? Right? Meaning if this wall was considered part of the Kodesh HaKodashim, so then you would have to make the divider at the beginning of the one where the one Amma wall would have been. If you say that the Amatroxin, that this one Amma wall was part of the Heichal, well then you could put the the curtain at the end of where the wall would have been. And since they weren't sure if this one Amma thick wall was considered part of the Heichal, part of the Kodesh HaKodashim, so v'avuj te paroches. So they made two curtains with the one ama gap in between, and it was basically in place of the one ama thick wall. Tanu Rabbanu, the rabbis taught. Ben Amizbeach le Menorah, Hoy Mahalach to Rabbi Yehuda. You hear that, friends? When you walk into the heichal by way of the ulam, so right ahead of you, we've learned this before. Right ahead of you was the mizbeach haktoris. If you would continue walking past the Mizbech HaKatoris, on your left hand side is going to be, right in the south, is going to be the menorah. On your right hand side, to the north, is going to be the Shulchan. Now, Tanur Rabbanu, the rabbis taught, Ben Mizbech Le Menorah, Ay Malach Div Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda's opinion was, that how would the, what was the route that the Kohen Gadol would take from the Ulam to get to the Kodesh Shukadoshim? Says Rabbi Yehuda, he would walk between the Mizbech and the menorah, i.e. on the left side of the Heichel, the southern part of the Heichel. Reb Meir Omer ben Shulchan the Mizbeach. Reb Meir's opinion is that he would walk between the Shulchan and the Mizbeach, i.e. in the north part of the Heichel. The Yesh Omer ben Shulchan the Kosel. And there's an opinion that he would take a walk between the Shulchan, which was on the northern part of the Heichel, and the wall, right? Because the Shulchan, I believe, was two and a half Amis from the wall. So, according to the Yesh Omrim, he would mamish walk just straight up the side, straight up the northern side, between the Shulchan and the wall. Man Yesh Omrim, fact, the Gemara, who's this Yesh Omrim who says that he would walk between the Shulchan and the wall? Omr of Chizde Reb Yossi. says Reb Chizde that the Yesh Omrim is Reb Yossi. The Omr, Pischa Betzafen Koi, that Reb Yossi's opinion is that the entrance into the Kodesh HaKodashim was in the north. Remember, Reb Yossi says that there was only one curtain there. And everyone agrees that the opening into the Kodesh HaKodashim was in the, on the northern side. Everyone agrees. However, if you're the Tanakama and you say that there were two curtains, so the first cur- curtain that you get to, the entrance into there is on the southern side. You then walk into the, in, Amma in between from the southern side. You then walk to the northern side and then enter into the Kodesh HaKodashim. However, if you're a Biosi and say that there was only one curtain, well, that one curtain would have an opening in the northern side towards the Koda, into the Kodesh HaKodashim. So according to, um, Rabiosi, so Pischa, Bitsaf and Kai, so the entrance, from the Heichal into the Kodesh HaKodashim was in the north and there was only one curtain and therefore he would walk up the northern side and just go straight into the Kodesh HaKodashim. Rabbi Yehuda Amrlach, whereas Rabbi Yehuda who says that he would walk in the southern part of the Heichal between the Mizbeach and the Menorah, Pischa Bedarim Kai, he would say, well, there were two curtains and the entrance therefore was on the southern side then he would walk up to the northern side and enter into the Kodesh HaKodashim um, Passing through the second curtain on the northern side. Reb Meir commands Svirle. Frakti Gemara, who does Reb Meir hold like? Reb Meir says that he walks on the right side, but not straight up the right side next to the wall. Rather, he walks between the Mizbeach and the Shulchan. 
Ikrab Yehuda sphere, lay nail Kreb Yehuda. If you hold like Kreb Yehuda that the entrance was in the, that the opening in the curtain was in the south, well then he should say like Kreb Yehuda that he walks between the Mizbeach and the Menorah. Ikrab Yosi sphere, lay nail Kreb Yosi. If you hold like Kreb Yosi that the entrance was in the, the entrance in the curtain was in the northern side of the Hechel, well then let him, let Rabbeir say like Rabbi Yossi that he just walks right up the, right alongside the wall. The northern wall of the Hechel. The Olam Rabbi Yossi Sfirlet. The Gemara says that's true. Really, Rabbeir does hold like Rabbi Yossi that the entrance to the Kodesh Kodashim was in the northern side of the Hechel. Rabbi Amrlach. But, Rabbeir will respond, Shulchan is tzafen vidar munachin. Umavzgalei shulchan v'lo mesayalei. You hear that, friends? I believe that we learned this in the Gemara Masech Tashkal, that uh, I think it was Shleim HaMelech, in the Heichal, he added an additional ten Shulchans. So therefore, there were five Shulchans, and another five Shulchans, and in the middle was the Shulchan. So, Mayor, we, the Gemara wants to say that according to a mayor, the Shulchans, basically, they were going from north to south, which means, now, the width of the Heichel was 20 Amis. Each Shulchan was 2 Amis. So 5 Shulchanos is 10 Amis. Which means that Mamis, you had to have all 5s. If we're saying that they're going north-south, that basically means perpendicular to, where, to the Kohen Gadol walking to get to the Kodesh HaKadoshim. So they're basically blocking his path. Because since the Shulchan has to be in the north, I think I'm pretty sure that we learned this in Masech Tashkalim, that since the Shulchan needs to be in the north half of the Azara, no, of the Heichel, and there were five of them, right, because Shlomo Melech added an additional ten, five and five, and so there were five of them lined up, and each one has a length of, of two Amis, so five times two is ten, in order to make sure that all five of them are in the northern part of the Heichel, the Mamish have to be smack against the wall, and if that's the case, Lemaise, it's going to be impossible to walk straight down the wall to get to the uh, Kodesh Kodashim because you're going to be blocked by the Shulchanos. And therefore, you have to go between the Shulchan, kind of walk around the Shulchanos, that you go past the Mizbeach, around the Shulchanos, and then you um, go into the Kodesh Kodashim. Vibay same, or if you want to say, Le'olam Mizrach Umayr Menachin. No, really you could say that the Shulchanos are going um, east-west, in which case maybe you should be able to just walk around Right, walk straight up the wall, the northern wall of the Azara, the Hegel. But, says of Meir, look, it's not so mechubad to walk straight up the northern wall of the Hegel and go straight into the Kodesh Kodashim while you're looking through the opening of the, of the, of the paroches, right, that you're looking through the opening into the Kodesh Kodashim the whole way while you're walking across the Heichal, you're looking straight into the Kodesh HaKadoshim, says Rameir, it's not kavod, and therefore you would kind of enter in in the middle, go around the Mizbeach, and only at the end kind of make your way to the um, entrance of the Kodesh HaKadoshim in the north. For Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi, who has, seems to have no problem with him sort of darting straight in a straight line for the Kodesh HaKadoshim, while looking through the entranceway the entire time, potentially. That Rabbi Yossi's response is, look, the Yidin are so, are, are, are so beloved to God that they don't technically need a messenger. They could just daven on their own. As Rashi says, Everyone can pray for himself. Therefore, their, their messenger is, I guess, on a certain level that he would be able to, um, be, uh, on a certain level that he would be able to walk straight into the Kodesh HaKodashim. So, Rabbi Huda, just like Rabbi Yossi says, walk straight along the northern wall. So, Rabbi Huda, how come you're saying that he walks between the menorah and the shul and the and the and the and the mizbeach, or between the mizbeach and the menorah, Rabbi Yehuda, why doesn't he just walk straight along the southern wall 
And certainly he's not going to be looking to the Kodesh Kodashim because there's an additional curtain there blocking his view. So according to Rabbi Yehuda, why does he have to walk between the Mizbeach Haktar, the Mizbeach Haktaris and the Menorah? Why not just walk along the southern wall? Mishachre money, to which the Gemara says, his white clothes will get dirty. Because by the menorah, there was oil, there was burning, there was smoke and stuff. And therefore, I guess that the uh, the southern wall of the Hecho by the menorah got black. And therefore, if the Kohen Gadol would walk by in his white clothing, it would get dirty. So therefore, Rebuta says, so that the Kohen Gadol doesn't get dirty, he walks between the uh, Mizbeach, Mizbeach Haktaris and the, and the menorah to avoid his white clothing rubbing against the smoky wall. The Sudi wall. Chevre, well, that was Daf Nun Aleph of Masechta Yoma. So the first part of the Daf kind of wrapped up our discussions regarding the um, cow of the Kohen Gadol. Was it considered a Korban Yachid or a Korban Tzibor? Um, the Nafkamina being, if it's a Korban Yachid, so then it would be able to make a Tamura. If it's a Korban Tzibor, then it would not be able to make a Tamura. Um, we then got into a new Mishnah which describes how the Kohen Gadol would walk across the Heichal um, to make his way into the Kodesh HaKodashim. We saw a three-way Machlokas about... So first of all, we saw Machlokas between the Tanakama and Rabbi Yossi. Tanakama says that there were two curtains in the um, dividing between the Kodesh and the Kodesh HaKodashim. Rabbi Yossi says that there was only one. We then saw a three-way Machlokas between Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Meir, and Rabbi Yossi about what was the route that the Kohen Gadol took to make his way through the Heichal to get to the Kodesh HaKadoshim. Reb Yehuda says that he would walk between the Mizbech HaKatoris and the Menorah. Reb Meir says he would walk between the Mizbech HaKatoris and the Sholchan. Reb Yossi says he would walk between the Sholchan and the wall, Kilo along the northern wall of the uh, Heichal and go straight into the Kodesh HaKadoshim. That was Dav Nunalf Masech Yoma. I hope you enjoyed. Cheers.